Japan places high priority in its global leadership in science, technology, and innovation. The role of science and technology has become even greater during the pandemic and in the post-pandemic world. In order to respond to global challenges posed by COVID-19, the economy, security, and climate change, as well as rapidly advancing digitalization. There are uh, great potentials in Japan and Canada, science and technology um, cooperation. In today's webinar, we will discuss the challenges and the opportunities of Japan-Canada SDI collaborations during and after the pandemic, the academic achievements of Japan-Canada uh, research collaborations. I hope this webinar will kick off for our two countries' public discussion in SDI cooperation. I hope to see more discussions to follow uh, in the future uh, to further enhance Japan-Canada SDI collaborations involving government, academia, and the private sector. As you know, COVID-19 spread around the world and lockdowns could have seriously constrained our partnership. However, thanks to digitized exchanges, our collaborations have flourished in these challenging times. For instance, the successful workshop organized by McGill University in Riken just last month, January 26, 27, had more than 170 participants. Furthermore, the National Research Council of Canada has been very active in working with Riken and with other institutes and organizations in Japan, including ATR, referred to earlier, and AIST, amongst others. Our objective today is to provide you with highlights of recent and current Canada-Japan SDI partnerships and to outline plans to develop more vibrant collaboration in the future. We anticipate that this inaugural webinar will lead to new discoveries and inventions to be showcased in different venues in the next several years. NRC has a long history of collaboration with Japan. And in fact, our first co-publication dates back to 1960. And while much collaboration has followed since, we felt there was great opportunity to deepen relations. And in 2018, we embarked on an initiative to increase our engagement with Japan. Canada and Japan have a long and vibrant history of R&D collaboration, having signed a science and technology treaty in 1986 and having realized over 11,000 co-publications between 2015 and 2019, nearly 3,000 in 2020. NRC accounts for several hundred of these, with 52 last year alone. And I would highlight that despite our current inability to travel to Japan, momentum continues. NRC signed 22 agreements with 16 Japanese organizations in 2020, and another nine since January 2021. Since 2019, we've also held a number of matchmaking opportunities to connect 140 Canadian SMEs with about 65 Japanese companies. In October 2019, NRC opened its first international office right next to Tokyo Station. Mr. Sasaki, or Sasaki-san, heads the office, and he is the former CEO of Fujitsu Laboratories and CTO of Fujitsu Limited. So we're very pleased to have him with us. He has been helping NRC to connect with Japanese companies, universities, and research institutes. And I can tell you that today, without a doubt, NRC's profile in Japan has never been higher. Related the relation between Riken and Canada, we have already so many collaborations with Canadian institutions. As already mentioned, we had recently, uh, last year, Riken NRC High Performance Computing Workshop and also we try to have really developing collaboration between several centers in Deakin and NRC. Related to universities, we have Maggie universities with MOU and not only on the paper, but concretely taking action to have really ongoing project. We try to develop therapies and vaccines and uh, we use our high computer computing to have simulations and prediction using Fugaku. 
and not only on the life science bio domain, but we try to understand social reactions. So combining AI tools to really have an understanding and social impact of COVID-19. And to do that, we try to put into practice open science by sharing data with globally and serving to global community. In this, the COVID-19 eras, we, um, Deakin IMS and the Mac University discussed how we can face the, these COVID-19s. And the McGill University is the centers of collecting the human genomic data in Canada. And then we have the uh, long study to analyze the human genome data, like right, using the GBIS. So by, by using the uh, analysis pipeline in Dickens, uh, we will uh, face or, for, or attackers to identify are there any genetic factors associated with individual difference in susceptibility to COVID-19, like a virus transmission, severity of disease, sudden aggravation or second disease. International exchange for students in PhD programs is increasingly worldwide an important feature of, of training. Having experience in multiple research systems uh, is a is is a important for career development. In fact, can be career changing for 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 students. So, uh, and we would we want to exchange uh, students with uh, with Rican. And so, one of the things that we've done is to set up a joint uh, Japan Canada PhD program. And one of the interesting findings in there, because we have projects where it's an SME working with an SME, an SME working with a large firm, um, etc. But we also have projects that we call two plus two, where we have a Canadian and uh, and Japanese SME working with each other, but also with research institutes and universities. I think now is the opportunity to um, to create new opportunities for Japan and Canada, not only in the areas mentioned, but in other areas of national priority, be it connected to climate science, energy, et cetera, et cetera.